I want to start with a common misconception um, between histograms and bar charts. Uh, so they're, they're often confused because they look very similar. And uh, sometimes people say, okay, well, if there's spaces between the bars, it's a bar chart. And if not, it's a histogram. And that, that actually does play out pretty well. Uh, but it's not the real reason, and there's certainly exceptions. So that's that's not what we should use as a reason. The reason, uh, the, the main difference is the variable along the bottom here, if it's categorical, like what we see here, we see different categoricals of music information sources, uh, then it's a bar chart. And the reason is we could move these around in a different order, and it would still be same data, a, a portrayal of the same data not like there's any kind of downward trend just because we see these bars in different order. Uh, we could easily rearrange these in alphabetical order and it would still be. Whereas on a histogram, you will have a quantitative data. It could be time, it could be age, height, weight, something, but it's going to be quantitative uh, variable down here. And, and that kind of forces the histogram to follow a certain order. And then we can see patterns in that order. And I'll show you what I mean in an example here. So just to give you some context, um, Lyme disease carried mostly by deer ticks, which are pretty small. I grew up in the Midwest where we had real big dog ticks or something um, that were easy to spot and pull out of your hair. Uh, but th these are a little... Uh, almost invisible critters. And um, sometimes they carry Lyme disease, which not always, but, but sometimes within the next month or so, the person will break out in a bullseye shaped rash. If you ever have a rash like this, uh, make sure you do call your doctor immediately because there's ways to treat it with antibiotics if you get it early. But if you don't, then it kind of enters in your system and it goes dormant for a while and then comes up and it's pretty common um, in this area in Virginia. Uh, it's it's spreading. Um, it's been spreading in the last years. The region of Lyme disease. So uh, it kind of sticks with you for a long time. It can become a chronic disease um, with with some not so fun symptoms. So this is Lyme disease. Here's a chart of the cases uh, 2001 to 2010. And notice they're divided male and female, so we have a bar within each age category. So the first question here is just a superficial one. What type of chart do we have? Um, and notice that this variable on the bottom is quantitative, meaning that we do have a histogram, even though there are spaces in between these bars. Even still, this is a histogram because this is quantitative. And the importance of it being a histogram versus a bar chart is if we see patterns moving from left to right, that is a legitimate pattern. It's not just how the bars happen to be arranged, like in the chart we saw with music sources. Um, so this tells us something. It tells us that the age groups that are really at risk for Lyme disease are children, um, especially male children. And this was 2001 to 2010. So this perhaps has changed over time, uh, maybe males were out playing around in forests and high grass more than females at that time, female children. Uh, but whatever case, there was this peak, and then it kind of settles down for the college age and early 20s, uh, traditional marriage age. And then we have another peak right here. Um, we have to be careful of correlation and causation here. Uh, one interpretation, correlation, would be that if you're young, or if you're in your mid 40s, you have to be careful about Lyme disease because you're at high risk. My guess is there's a lurking variable. It's not really the age that's causing susceptibility to Lyme disease. My guess is it's more the time you spend out in rugged areas, uh, which just happens to be kids and people that are finally kind of settling into a routine in life, their kids are getting older. Um, those two age groups tend to be when you spend more time in areas where, where you'd be susceptible to that. So that would be a lurking variable. Uh, and that's showing you the patterns of the histogram, how you can read those trends, those gaps, those rises. Um, everything is meaningful in a histogram in a bar chart. 